If you're building a project in Nest.js, odds are you probably want to authenticate it. An easy way of authentication is with a username and password and using JWTs on every request. In a previous video that I've linked in the description, I show you how to do this with Nest.js. I want to take this one step further by adding Google Authentication to it. We are building out Google Authentication as a REST API for a front-end web app. This means that to log into the user, the client will use the client ID and send it to Google to get a new access token. And the client will then send that access token to the server, which the server will use that access token and send it to Google to get the user's email. And then using that email, the server will log the user in and then send a new refresh and access token. Jump right in with the code. This video is using the code from my previous video, JWT Authentication in SJS. If you want to see how we got here, you can watch that video. Otherwise, you can fork the final project in the GitHub repo linked below. To get started, we can jump right into auth.service and create a function that will handle authenticating and logging in a user signing in with Google. This function will be called login Google user and it will take in a token of type string and then because in the rest of our application I'm storing the user agent and IP address in the refresh token we'll accept those as well. Then this function will return a promise of our new access token and refresh token. Important to note that when someone signs in with Google on the web app, Google will give them an access token. However, we're not going to use that access token when communicating with our server. That's why we have to create a new access token. The access token that Google uses us will be used just to verify the user. In order for us to authenticate users, we need to install Google APIs. So you can run in your terminal, npm install Google APIs. With that installed, we can import auth and and Google from that. Then we can create a new IVAR inside of auth service and name it OAuth client and it'll be a type auth.oauth2 client. The way Google authentication works is Google provides us with a client ID and a client secret. The front end uses the client ID to generate an encrypted access token, which includes their email. On our back end, we use the client ID and the client secret to decrypt that token so we can access the user's email. So on our constructor, we can get the client ID from our environment variables, and we'll also get the client secret from our environment. Then we'll instantiate our OAuth client variable by setting it to a new google.auth.oauth2 and passing in our client ID and client secret. Back inside of our login Google user function, we can set token info to the await of the auth client.get token info and we'll pass in that token string. This function essentially decrypted the token so we can use the decrypted token's email field to find the user. If the user exists, we can create a new refresh and access token and pass those in, otherwise we will return undefined. Because we are using our own access token and refresh token, the logout function will remain the same. And now our web app will use that access token and refresh token to communicate with our server. To expose this to our REST API, we need to create a new post request that slash Google slash login. We'll call the function Google login. For the body of this post request, we need a new DTO object called Google token DTO. This DTO object is just going to be a token of type string. And we're going to add the decorators is string and is not empty. In order for these decorators to work, you need to make sure you have class-validator imported into your project. Our other two parameters will be our request object and an IP address. This function will then return a promise of an access token and our refresh token. Inside this function, we'll create a variable called result and set it to the auth service login Google user. We will be passing in that body.token and then also our user agent and IP address. If result exists, then we'll just return the result. Otherwise, we're going to throw a new HTTP exception that is showing the status of unauthorized. In order for all of this to work, we need our client ID and client secret from Google. To do this, you need to go to Google Cloud Platform and create a project if you don't have already one created. Navigate to APIs and Services and click on the Credentials. You can click the Create Credentials button and create an OAuth Client ID credential. For the type, this is what you'll be using it as. And in our example, it's a web app, so we can click Web App. And then we can also set name to web as well. In the authorized JavaScript, origins sections inside of the URIs you can add the endpoint of your web API so if you're using a react app that's localhost 3000 and then also the domains that you're using in production in order for you to use a domain you have to verify it which Google will help you go through that process you can add those same URIs for authorized redirect URI you also will want to fill out all the information inside of the OAuth consent screen page as well 
After all of this, Google will give you a client ID and secret. You can add those to your environment. So there you have a functioning Google authentication on your back end. If you want to see how to do this on the front end, please leave a like and subscribe as I'll be posting more videos like that in the future.